This is problem 7-45, it's on page 350. If L equals 9 meters, the beam will fail when the maximum shear force uh, is V max equals 5 kilonewtons, or the maximum bending moment is M max equal 22 kilonewton meters. Determine the largest couple moment, M naught, the beam will support. Now, in thinking about this, you may say, well, wait a second, they just asked for the maximum moment, and they said that uh, the maximum moment that can be supported is, uh, what, 22 and a half or so? What would they say? I uh, know, 22 kilonewton meters. So, since the free body diagram looks something like this, uh, AY, BY, there's a concentrated moment, M naught in the middle, and a, you know, potentially AX, isn't the maximum moment that we can apply just 22 kilonewton meters? Well, there's a difference between an externally applied moment and the moment within the beam material. So let's analyze this and see what we can come up with. Obviously, if we sum forces in the vertical direction on this free body diagram, AX is zero. So there's no need to contend with it. But why don't we sum moments about point A, taking counterclockwise as positive, okay? If we do that, what would we have? Well, let's see, the length of the beam is evenly divided on either side of the point moment load. And so, uh, let's see, we'd have L, the total length of the beam, times BY minus M0 equals zero, because it's the overall free body diagram. We're not talking about any loading within the beam, we're talking about external loads to the beam and reactions. So BY, the, the, the reaction uh, load at the end was, is simply M0 over L. So whatever moment is externally applied, if we divide that by the length of the beam, that will be the reaction at B. Summing forces in the vertical direction, AY plus BY equals zero, tells us then that AY and BY are opposite, so this must be negative M0 over L. And that should make some sense. If you twist on the beam like this, it's going to push down here and pull up here. So AY will actually have to pull down to keep the beam in equilibrium. So that's the free body diagram. Now let's consider a free body diagram of a portion of the beam. So let's take the left hand side, we'll have AY, and within the beam material, there will be shear V and moment M. Now this is before we reach the concentrated moment portion. And so what we can glean from this is that the magnitude of the shear, regardless of how far we go along the beam, even after the moment, the magnitude of the shear will simply be equal to a y. So if we want to make a shear and moment diagram, uh, let's see, since a y is negative and v will equal it, I'm going to put the axis uh, up high. And by the way, oh, they said the length of the beam was what? Nine meters, v max five kilonewton. Let me write some of this down. So L equal nine meters, v max equal five kilonewtons and M max within the beam material, 22 kilonewton meters, okay? So anyway, so the shear begins at a value of AY, which is negative M naught over L. And it just remains constant until we get to B where the uh, shear goes up to zero. Of course, this is at length L, so let's just indicate this as point B and point A. Of course, the units of the, the position along the length of the beam are meters. Now, what about the moment diagram? You might be tempted to say that the moment diagram is very simple because, look, we're just adding up area. Well, the moment certainly has to begin at zero, but it also should end at zero, shouldn't it? Because there's nothing at the end of the beam applying moment. And so if we calculate the magnitude of the moment, let's say before we get to the point moment load M naught, what will we find? Well, let's see, let me move the AY a bit to separate those. In fact, let me move the moment down here. Well, let's see, summing moments about point A, we'd have the only moment that needs to be resisted is the moment of the shear. So that would be, uh, let's see, V times X, however far along we 
we cut the beam. But of course, V is equal to AY, which is negative M naught, so we end up with X over L. So the moment, if we plug in X equals zero, the moment's zero, but as we increase X, we get a more and more negative value for the moment, right? In fact, by the time we get to X equal L over two, the magnitude of the moment would be half of M naught, wouldn't it? Because by the time we get to this point, certainly negative, X is equal to L over two, the L's cancel and we get M naught over two. Now at this point, what happens? Well, let's find out, let's make a free body diagram that includes the point moment load. Let's see what happens to the shear and what happens to the moment. As I said before, the shear is still the same because you, it, the shear is calculated by summing forces in the vertical direction. M0 does not change that in any way. You might say, well, it seems like the larger M0 is the, the bigger AY and BY would be. Yes, that's true. So the effect of the moment is already incorporated into the reaction AY. Okay? And so AY and V are still the same, and the shear uh, diagram continues on its merry way. But what about the moment? Well, now not only is there a moment that must be resisted due to the shear, but now there's also a moment that must be resisted due to the externally applied moment. Again, the shear is still negative m naught over Lx. And so look what's happened. If we plug in x equals L over 2, we'll get m naught over 2 negative plus m naught. So sure enough, the moment jumps up because of the point moment load to m naught over 2. We can prove that by saying, well, let's see, at x equal to L over 2, the moment in the beam, which is what this M stands for, is negative M naught over L times L over 2 plus M naught. You see what happens is we get half of M naught subtracted from M naught, so we get M naught over 2. Okay. Now, as we move the X position along, as we consider the cut moving closer and closer to B, all that happens is X gets larger and larger. And in fact, X becomes L eventually, and at X equal to L, what happens is we get L over L, which is 1, and we get M naught minus M naught, so we get 0. So sure enough, the moment goes to 0 at the end of the beam. So there's the shear and moment diagram for this particular beam, but that's not really the question. The question is, what's the largest moment M naught that we can apply before the beam fails. Well, let's see. If we consider the shear, the value of shear maximum is five kilonewtons, but that's equal to M naught over L. And again, I don't care if this is positive or negative. That doesn't matter. The positive and negative is simply for the sake of these diagrams so they end up being consistent later. So the fact that the shear is negative just indicates a direction, okay? So if the, <clears throat> length of the beam is actually 9 meters, which I believe is what they gave us, yes, then M naught maximum would be 4 kilonewtons times 9 meters, and so that comes out to what, 45 kilonewton meters? So if we apply an external moment of 45 kilonewton meters, the beam will begin to fail due to shear. What about moment though? What is the moment within the beam? Well, notice that the moment within the beam varies. It depends on what position you talk about or you consider as to what the moment is. For example, just to the left of the concentrated moment, the moment within the beam is half of the externally applied moment, but to the right, it is you know, a positive half instead of negative half. So if we say that the moment within the beam must be at most 22 kilonewton meters, well, that is equal to M naught over 2, right? The externally applied moment. Because look, that's the maximum value of the moment. Whether it's positive or negative, it doesn't matter. It's the same value in this case. So we simply need to determine M naught over 2. So in other words, M naught can at maximum be 2 times 22 is 44 kilonewton meters. Now, which one matters? 
Well, the smaller one matters, right? By the time we've reached 44 kilonewton meters, the beam will begin to fail due to the moment. And so we can never reach this 45 kilonewton meters. So the maximum external moment that can be applied is 44 kilonewton meters. It's important to understand there's a difference between an externally applied moment and an internal moment, a moment within the beam material. And as we see here, the moment within the beam material is half of the externally applied moment, at least at the maximum point, which is in the center of the beam.